Well, good morning, everybody. Hope you're having a great beginning, you know, to this Tuesday, Wednesday, you know, uh, but I do know it is the beginning of March. And uh, so, wow, went through the month of February. February always feels fast, probably because it has a couple less days than the uh, other months. But uh, needless to say, uh, time just does not seem to be slowing down, does it? And so uh, with that being said, uh, we are going to make sure that we take the time that God has given us uh, to be able to just be encouraged and honor him. Now, for those of you, you know, who might be new uh, to what this is all about, uh, this is something that we started during COVID. We just decided not to stop it uh, as an opportunity to go through the Bible verse by verse, chapter by chapter, picking different books. We're not going in a specific order. We're just kind of, you know, uh, jumping Old Testament, New Testament, you know, different ways to be able to do that. And as you can see, this is live. So it's not polished. It's not, you know, something that uh, is is pre, you know, um, thought through in a, in a very deep and many hour way. It's one of those that I'm just trying to hope to model uh, some of the things that we can just learn by doing this together. And so I hope that's been encouraging to you. And if so, I want to encourage you to keep sharing it here um, or on YouTube. I know has uh, been and becoming more and more popular. So uh, again, thanks for being here. Let's jump in now to 2 Corinthians, you know, chapter 10. 2 Corinthians chapter 10. Uh, in chapters 10 through 13, uh, we're going to see Paul make a big shift. So the last couple of days, uh, in chapters uh, um, eight and nine, uh, Paul talked about the importance of generosity, the importance of giving, you know, and uh, as he's coming to collect a special offering. Now we're going to kind of shift. It almost feels like, you know, Paul says, okay, done with that. For the next three chapters, I'm going to kind of go back to why this is important for uh, my reputation before you, our reputation before God, and our relationship with one another. So he's going to kind of hit on a lot of those themes and poke at and point out, you know, some very um, um, disturbing things, you know, in the church uh, in a very direct way. And so, um, again, you know, here we are in 2 Corinthians chapter 10. Now, I, Paul, appeal to you with the gentleness and kindness of Christ. Though I realize you think I am timid in person and bold only when I write from far away. So they have this understanding that, hey, Paul, you seem to present yourself you know, as one thing when you're writing and something else when you're face to face. Now, we have something similar in our culture today if this is in fact true. Uh, we call them keyboard warriors. You know, uh, that's at least uh, my wife's nickname, you know, that happened through our HOA and uh, through COVID as well. People who have a lot of uh, uh, ability to uh, be more direct, mean, forthright uh, in their communication style when it is written versus when somebody is face to face. Uh, there's two different kinds of styles and uh, and people just got really, you know, this courage, this keyboard warrior courage, like, look at me, I am typing, you know, hard things and I'm gonna address things. And then when you meet them face to face, it becomes something different. It says this, uh, well, you know, I am begging you now so that, and by the way, that's what they're accusing him of. You know, and let's find out if it's true. Well, I'm begging you now so that when I come, I won't have to be bold with those who think we act from human motives. So he's saying, okay, actually what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to give the hard stuff through letter because sometimes it can be easier to receive instead of the hard stuff face to face, which actually, you know, could be really, really challenging, you know, to receive. And he's trying to let them know that the purpose behind these kind of confrontation, uh, rebuking, is actually something that's good. And it's not from their human motives. It's not from their desire. And that's the key. So I wanna stop right there. If you get nothing else today, when it comes to conflict, the conflict that we need to have is needs to ask the first question is why? Why am I addressing this conflict or why do I need to? So some of us like to avoid conflict at all costs because we hate it or when we do it, we just kind of write it and we're kind of done with it. Uh, others of us jump into conflict and we don't do it with good motives. Both of them could not be done with good motives. You know, meaning what's the why? Is it for human motives? Is it for revenge? Is it for purpose? Or is the, the, um, the correction, the rebuke, the, the, the conflict that I want to have, is it because I truly want God's best for the other person? That's what Paul's going to address. Like, I'm not doing this for human motives. I'm not doing this to stroke my own ego. I'm not doing this to make myself look good. I'm actually doing this for your sake. I'm actually doing this because Christ has called me to do this. So I want you to identify which side are you on? 
Are you a person that kind of avoids conflict at all costs? Or when you do, you're kind of just type it kind of quick, maybe more passive aggressive. Uh, or are you the person, you know, that's more bold? Okay, if you're more of the ten of the typing, you know, uh, more a little more passive aggressive, my encouragement is that you that you be challenged to get a little bit more face to face, that you uh, maybe a little bit more clear in your written conversation, which is fine, but then follow it up with a face to face. If you're more face to face, you know, maybe you need to to soften it. Maybe you need to realize that there's a different way to be able to present or have this conversation. And if that's the case. You know, um, uh, my prayer and hope is that in both cases that we have the right motives in mind. We are human, but we don't wage war as humans do. We only use, we use God's mighty weapons, not worldly weapons, to knock down the strongholds of human reasoning and to destroy false arguments. So he's not, he's, he's saying there's a different tactic and a different way to do it. We destroy every proud obstacle that keeps people from knowing God. We capture their rebellious thoughts and teach them to obey Christ. And after you have become fully obedient, we will punish everyone who remains disobedient. What a powerful three verses. See, the the Christians at Corinth tended to rely and admire the carnal weapons of of, of battle. They want to say, okay, here's how the world fights. And this is how we're going to fight. And you're like, no, how does God fight? Well, let me remind you. Instead, you know, uh, uh, let me remind you how, how, how God fights. God fights with something called the belt of truth the breastplate of light righteousness, the shoes of the gospel, the shield of faith, the helmet of salvation, and the sword of the spirit. That is the armor we're supposed to wear. And in fact, this is the opposite. Instead of the belt and, tr- and truth, uh, many people fight with manipulation. Instead of the breastplate of righteousness, many people fight with an image of success or lording power over. Instead of the shoes of the gospel, you know, uh, people fight with smooth words. Like maybe I can just convince you and be that kind of slick person to talk you into something. Instead of the shield of faith, people can fight with the perception of power. The reason I say perception is you might be in a powerful position, but it's all perception. You know, like in authority, in my title, in my role, whatever it may be. Instead of the helmet of salvation, people have a, uh, usually have an opportunity to lord over, you know, uh, authority. That's what I meant to say. Instead of the, the sword of the spirit, uh, they fight with human schemes and programs. And so, and so we want to make sure that we are doing the conflict in the way, because those three verses are very powerful. And I hope you actually get a chance to reread them you know, a bit later today, verses three through six. <coughs> Not COVID. Uh, verse seven, look at the obvious facts. Those who say they belong to Christ must recognize that we belong to Christ as much as they do. I may seem to be boasting too much about the authority given to us by the Lord, but our authority builds you up. It doesn't tear you down. So I will not be ashamed at using my authority. See, we don't like to address this, but it's so critical if we're going to have a healthy Christ-centered culture that we're willing to stick through and we're willing to receive and to give when it comes to the opportunity to correct, to rebuke, and to train into righteousness. I'm not trying to frighten you by my letters. For some say Paul's letters are demanding and forceful and in person he is weak and his speeches are worthless. Those people should realize that our actions when we arrive in person will be as forceful as what we say in our letters from far away. He says, okay, I'm going to show you, you know, that it is the same. <clears throat> Don't worry. We wouldn't dare say that we are as wonderful as those other men who tell you how important they are. So obviously there's some people that are stirring some things up and they're using the world's way that Paul is kind of trying to contradict to get people to align with what they think in this fresh new church, which is so important without the New Testament. So, you know, how are we leading? How are people being guided? Uh, we will not boast about the things done outside of our authority. We will boast only of what would happen within the boundaries of the work God has given us, <coughs> which includes working for, with you. We are not reaching beyond these boundaries when we claim authority over you as if we've never visited you, for we were the first to travel all the way to Corinth with the good news of Christ. So he tries to get historical on them, you know, and be able to remind them where they came from. Nor do we boast and claim credit for the work someone else has done. Instead, we hope that your faith will grow so that the boundaries of our work among you will be extended. So we're hoping that the proclamation of the gospel will continue on further and further. Then we'll be able to go and preach the good news in other places far beyond you where no one else is working. Then there will be no question of our boasting about work done in someone else's territory. As the scriptures say, if you want to boast, boast only about the Lord. 
When people commend themselves, it doesn't count for much. The important thing is for the Lord to commend them. So it's okay to say, look what God is doing. I got a chance to be a part of it. It's okay to say those things as long as you're pointing the glory and the, and the, and the encouragement back onto him. So with that being said, my prayer and hope for you on this day is that uh, you and I would recognize kind of what our, uh, what our go-tos are when it comes to conflict and that we might make sure that our motives are right on this day and then we would still have the courage to be able to confront, to rebuke, and to come alongside someone else because we love them. More often, we see that people are just like, well, that's just for them. You know, we're not gonna do it. We just wanna remain friends. We don't wanna distill the waters, but we're actually not helping people, especially those who follow Christ. We're actually hurting them. So again, this is all directed to the church and those in the church, you know, once again. And that's what I want us to make sure that we're focused on. With that being said, let's pray. Jesus, thank you. Thank you for confronting us, for leading us, for rebuking us, training us, correcting us. And I pray that we would then be able to do the same in the lives of others, having a pure heart and love for them in the same way that you love us. Help us not to shy away from the opportunities that you ask and lead us to do. It's in Jesus' name we pray, amen. Hey guys, have a great rest of your day and uh, I will see you again tomorrow uh, as we go into chapter 11. You're gonna kind of see these themes over the next couple days. Love you guys.